Continuing our tour, we have the A and B registers. For the most part, they're general purpose registers. They can be written to or read from. One thing you might notice that's different is the A register has an A bus connector that is one of the two inputs to the arithmetic logic unit, the other input being the W bus. One thing that shouldn't be overlooked is the W bus is terminated here with a terminating resistor to ground. Um, continuing looking at the arithmetic logic unit, uh, we have an adder and a subtractor and uh, some carry logic here. I'll explain that in just a minute. Um, one of the things that Logisim wouldn't let me do is uh, connect these to carry outputs together so they have to go through this multiplexer which is um, controlled by the uh, ALU subtract control line and uh, that determines whether we get an addition or a subtract operation out of the ALU as well as uh, the carry flag from whichever operation we're doing. So that uh, information is uh, also sent out to this uh, 8 input NOR gate uh, gives us a, a zero flag output we get our carry output um, we just bring out the eighth bit of the data to indicate a sign flag and all of that gets latched when we toggle the ALU out control signal. So that gates this um, eight input uh, gate for the data onto the temp register. Now this register is a little unique in that instead of getting its input from the W bus as almost all other registers do, this one only gets its input from the ALU, so this is a temporary holding area for the ALU, as well as these flip-flops down here that are used for holding the flag value of the ALU operation that was uh, latched when the ALU out was activated. Uh, again, we've got uh, LEDs here to indicate the values that are held in the register and latches and uh, in this case when we do an output from here uh, at least from this data register it does go out onto the W bus and uh, that's how we can transfer the results to uh, wherever we need it to go. I said I would explain how the carry works um, in some cases we want to have the status of the carry flag uh, affecting the addition or subtraction that we're doing and in some cases we don't. So I have a carry out control signal that is going through this AND gate and determines whether the state of the carry uh, affects this operation or not. If carry out is low, then it doesn't matter whatever the carry flag is, you're always going to get a low out here and you'll get a low into your adder or subtractor. If carry out is high, then carry low, uh, low and a high still gives you a low output, so carry goes through without being inverted or anything. And if carry's high, a 1 and a 1 gives you a 1, so that again the carry goes out and it's a high, no, nothing gets inverted or anything. So this is a convenient way to gate whether you use the carry flag in this operation. And it, it, it's kind of like a catch-22, the timing, you have to be careful to get it right so that uh, you latch the status of the carry flag in first and then you can use that carry flag uh, as a condition for the next operation. Before we look into the jump logic, Let's remember that the program counter typically holds the address of the next instruction to be executed. If we write an address to the program counter register, the next instruction will be executed from that instruction, causing a branch in execution, or a jump. 
Unconditional jumps are useful, but in many cases, we'd like to control whether the jump happens or not. The jump logic below allows us to do just that. The three control lines, carry out, zero out, and sign out, determine which of the three flags we'd like to use in our condition. If none of the flags are set, a regular unconditional jump is allowed to go through as well. Here we see the ALU carry, zero, and sign flags being brought in, and we have a flag invert control signal. This allows us to invert the status of any one of the flags and allows jumping on carry, not carry, zero, not zero, plus, or minus. All of this leading up to whether or not the jump signal is generated based on the condition of the flag. If we get the jump signal, then our new address is written into the program counter and program execution branches to that new location. If the condition is not true, then the jump signal is not activated and the program counter is left as is, fetching the next instruction in sequence as it normally would have. All of this content is available on my GitHub repository. If you've enjoyed this, please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of future videos in this series. And as always, thanks for watching.